minutes after eight and you're watching the special edition of Sunrise Live on E! Now looking at stories in Africa. Yes, we may be rich in natural and mineral resources, but despite all of this, we're still amongst the world's poorest continent. And the food scarcity that every third African uh, cannot afford is really a huge concern. Climate change also factors into uh, the 900 million inhabitants' ability uh, to, to have a food, adequate food and sufficient livelihood. Now, uh, an advocacy group Group One has a campaign that deals with extreme poverty in Africa and we're joined by uh, their director, Dr. Sipo Moyo, talk more about poverty alleviation on the African continent. And you at home are most welcome. Please give us a call on 011-537-9337 or 9338. Dr. Moyo, again, thanks so much uh, for, for joining us and starting this One Africa and, uh, organization and specifically the One campaign. How did it come about? Good morning, Cindy. Thanks for having me here. Um, one is a campaign and advocacy organization that's been in existence for just over 10 years. Um, the Africa um, uh, part of it is uh, relatively new. We set up the One Africa um, in um, 2010, 2010. So about three years, um, you know, since we've had a presence on the continent. And uh, what we focus on really, as you said, uh, is, uh, you know, ending extreme poverty. And the way we go about doing this is by, uh, is through advocacy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're a member-based organization. We have three million members in Africa and all over the world. Uh, and so we raise public awareness uh, through our membership. Uh, and uh, we also, uh, you know, work with uh, policy, le uh, policy makers, um, world leaders, uh, in ensuring that they are also keeping their commitments and keeping, you know, keeping their promises uh, when it comes to reducing poverty. So in Africa, for example, uh, we've been working very closely with the African Union and the African Heads of State uh, on uh, the focus on agriculture. Yes, uh, Dr. Moyo, we, we sometimes like to intellectualize uh, issues of poverty. It is politicized and we sometimes romanticize it as well, depending on where your research and studies come from. Mm -hmm. If you look at the global measure of what the poverty line is, sometimes you're told people living below the $2 mark, sometimes it's uh, somebody who, who lives under the $1 mark. How do we define poverty? Look, um, in addition to the, the income aspect of poverty, you know, like you said, people living bef below uh, $1.25 or whatever, I think what is also critical is the access that citizens have to health care, to education, to energy or power, uh, to clean water and sanitation. I think those are the qualitative measures of poverty. And when citizens don't have access to those things, uh, you know, th so they're living... Um, a life, you know, uh, below the dignity level, I would almost say. Yeah. Uh, so and, it's and not just about income. Yeah, yes, but just talking about availability and affordability or access mm -hmm. uh, of certain basic amenities. So South Africa really should not have anybody that lives below uh, the, uh, the global level or, or, or what is defined as the poverty line, considering that there's all these other uh, peripheral assistance that we have. And yet we, we are amongst the world's poorest still. Um, well, I'm not an expert on South Africa, but yeah. um, South Africa certainly is, um, you know, much better off uh, in terms of development uh, than the rest of Africa, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think the big struggle in South Africa is the degree of inequality, mm -hmm. uh, what is called the Gini coefficient, which is the, you know, the, the difference between the richest people and the poorest people. It is the highest in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a concern. We heard Mo Ibrahim last week uh, speaking at the 11th uh, Nelson Mandela uh, lecture uh, highlighting this fact. So I think that's the thing that South Africa has to struggle with. Um, but poverty is relative. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the depth of poverty in other African countries is certainly a lot worse than it is in South Africa. Yeah. And yeah, paint us a, pink, a, a yeah. picture in terms of uh, the, the rest of the continent. How are we dealing, especially how do we measure the investment in agriculture and other government um, initiatives in dealing with poverty. Mm -hmm. Well, if we just talk about food, for example, you have 300 million people who go to bed hungry every single night, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're talking about uh, HIV and AIDS, uh, you know, that in itself depletes the potential uh, GDP of the country. Take any of these diseases, the lack of education, the lack of electricity, all of these things actually erode almost between two and four percent of the GDP growth in any country. In other words, it takes away the potential for, mm -hmm. uh, for countries to prosper. 
And that's why it's really important because the multiplier effect of investing in these things uh, has a high return. Let's take agriculture, for example. In 2003, um, African heads of states made a commitment in Maputo uh, to invest 10% of their national budgets to agriculture. Uh, 10 years on, if you look at it, less than a handful of African countries have actually met that commitment, just about 10 countries out of 54 countries. Uh, and it's, the reason agriculture is important in Africa is that 70% of Africans actually rely on agriculture for their livelihood. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're going to begin to reduce poverty and make a dent in, in reducing poverty, agriculture is the logical sort of starting place. Um, it also employs a lot of women. 70% uh, of food is produced, 80% of the food is produced by women. Yes, um, but I'm going to have to interrupt you there, Dr. Moy, and find out that, especially when it comes to the right of ownership and whether it's workable uh, at, at land, we know that there is an issue of who the land belongs to. So mm -hmm. yes, maybe a government, I'll make an example, uh, maybe with uh, South Africa, wanting to invest more in agriculture and emerging farmers, and yet you find that we're still dealing with the issue of land ownership. Land ownership. Is that prevalent in the rest of Africa? It certainly is. You know, um, I think property rights and land ownership is a key issue uh, that I, our you know, African leaders are going to have to address uh, mm. sooner or later in a very comprehensive way. Uh, I was saying 80% of food is produced by women, and yet women only own 2% of the land rights in Africa. Mm. So that's your point, really. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that will need to be addressed. Um, and these are the things that really need to be looked into as, you know, African leaders recommit themselves to investing heavily, once again, in agriculture, is who owns the land, you know? Uh, how do they actually promote production and productivity on the land? Uh, how do you help women to have greater access to credit, for example? Because land is not the only issue. There's the whole issue of access to credit. There's the infrastructure issue. There's markets, you know? Uh, how do they get to the market or how do they get markets? Um, mm. So there's, there's a lot of things. All right, so how does the one campaign address all of these issues? And I know it's advocacy groups, so you're calling for participation from various sectors. How do you go about increasing your reach? Uh, like I said, we're a member-based organization. We have three million members all over the world, inclu including in Africa. And uh, so we work by raising public awareness. Uh, we work by uh, partnering with local uh, you know, citizens and civil society around the world. And then we also work by lobbying uh, the world leaders in Africa, particularly. We lobby the African leaders um, and pressure them really into keeping their commitments with the understanding mm -hmm. uh, that this can only be good for African citizens and that this can only promote you know, inclusive growth in Africa uh, and a more equal society and a more prosperous Africa, which really was the goal of the African Union or the organization of African unity when it started, yeah. you know, 50 years ago. All right, Dr. Sipo Moyo, thanks indeed for your time. And we'll be calling to our viewers as well to visit your website and join the One campaign in dealing with extreme poverty levels in Africa. As a collective, I'm sure we'll have a greater reach and impact. So you can go to one.org. That's their website, one.org. We'll be back after this.